All right, welcome back guys. My name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. Today's video should be a very fun one. Today we've got the Vanquish Products H10 Optic Buggy out here against an Axial Capra, but this is an original Capra, so these both do not have rear steer. These have drag axles. Uh, the Capra has portals. It is modified, but so is my H10. So we're gonna talk more about their modifications as we go. I'm just gonna go run some random obstacles out here, see how they compare, see if we can get one to do obstacles that the other one might not be able to. We're gonna see if it goes both ways, if we can find something that you know the capper succeeds in and maybe something that the optic succeeds in. This should be fun and I'm looking forward to it. Let's go hit the rocks and have some fun. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the Vanquish H10 optic. That's kind of why I'm making this video is because this is the new rig here on the block and I just wanna see how she compares. So there are some changes since the last time you guys have seen this one. And the biggest change here is that we've changed out our motor in ESC. I was running a revolver, which was a 2500 KV with a V3 ESC from Holmes Hobbies. And I've swapped that out for a Fusion Pro here. The Fusion Pro fits great in the VFD transmission. It's a, it's a snug fit, don't get me wrong, but uh, it does work out well. Drop to an 11 tooth pinion, and uh, yeah, the performance of the Fusion is just well known and they work fantastic. Another big change that we've done to this truck is we have added overdrive to the transmission. So thanks to my buddy Trevor uh, for getting me set up with an overdrive gear set for the VFD. It's the 21%, it is not the lightweight overdrive gear set. Um, long term that's definitely the way i want to go but uh, i think i may end up just swapping this vfd with another one of my rigs probably the uh, ford ice i don't care so much if the ford ice is lightweight um, but i would like my optic to be a little bit lighter if possible in the belly just because i want to push the performance on this truck a little more than i do on my ford ice got my cut and shut swampers on this one g8 proline super swampers they're narrower than the 2.2 Swampers that Proline makes. And I just like the look of these a little more. I'm trying to find some traction here. I'm not bellied out. I just can't quite get those rears to pull up. Okay, now I'm bellied out. So, something interesting there. Just searching for traction here. Now we're on a rocker panel. And I'm trying to crawl it. I don't want to just rally. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a bump. Yeah, it didn't take a whole lot. Nice. So we're going to do a short little line here. On our links there. There we go, just had to wiggle it around some more. And so here we are at the top of that climb. Now that's, this is one thing that uh, I think the optic struggles in a surprising amount, just because Vanquish is usually so good at this, is steering angle. And I think it's got a lot to do with that simulated hydraulic ram. Uh, we're kind of maxed out already on the ram and it just, it doesn't have impressive steering. It's got good steering. It's just that they normally set their bar, the, the standard of Vanquish steering is so high. Like, this truck probably turns better than a Red Cat Ascent ever will. But for being a Vanquish, I want it to be better. Okay, we're into our A pillar real hard there. Doing some buggy stuff. So I guess we'll try and hug this wall and drive this down. A little bit different line here. Long wheelbase certainly helping us out. Now this truck also has front weight in the axle. Uh, there, I don't have any brass knuckles for this thing. Uh, I've seen there are a couple options on the market at this point. Um, nothing that I'm looking to go buy right now. But I've got 2.2 Shift RC brass rings inside these custom wheels that I've put together. Uh, these are Vanquish 2.2 wheel faces, and then I put different width clamp rings on them and different back halves on the wheels. So they're they're definitely a one-off set that I had to, you know, use three different brands to make a set of wheels. That worked out really nice. 
And then I've got a Reefs 777 brass direct power servo in there as well. So there we go. Nice little combo of a line there. I'm gonna side hill across here. Ooh, that was just about ready to tip over there. Good side hill challenge for sure. And there it is, that was a fun little first line. Let's grab our Capra and see how that thing does on those same obstacles. Here we are, Axial Capra. This one is more modified than the Optic because I have replaced the skid plate in this car along with its entire transmission. This Capra has been uh, three gear swapped so that it has more gear reduction than the factory transmission. Definitely getting a tighter turning radius there as well. But I believe this car has more overdrive than my Optic. And on top of that, I believe that this one just flat out turns sharper. So more overdrive, sharper steering. Um, yeah, you're just gonna get a better turning radius, right? Now, if you threw a bunch of overdrive at a truck that doesn't turn as sharp against something without overdrive, um, yeah, that actually might be a pretty fair fight. That'd be interesting, but this guy is winning in both scenarios. And man, it just crawled right up and over that. Now, I will say these tires have way more use on them. And out here, the more you use a G8 tire, the better they become. But my optic did not do that to me. Settle down. Nice. So this, this thing may just be laying down more traction. It's not a perfect comparison. So yeah, this isn't a perfect comparison, but it's just fun to see how they do compare. These are just two trucks in my fleet. They're not RTRs or anything like that. You can't even buy this capper anymore. But if you have a rear steer, this, this will give you a good representation of a more fair fight if you didn't use the rear steer on your capper, right? Getting a little bit of unloading here, but that left rear is trapped, so it'll do that. Oh man, that rear did not want to come up that. And maybe I was just crawling a little slower because I wanted to explain more on the old H10 there, whereas the capper I feel like you guys have heard the, the spiel on. Um, yeah, made quick work of those obstacles. Overall, crawled them easier. But I mean, they're, they're similarly set up, right? They both got brass in the front end. This one just has brass knuckles. It doesn't have weight in the wheels. Let's see if we can side hill through this. Yeah, honestly, it felt better than the H10 did. And then they've got the same shocks, same length and everything. So, very interesting. The, the Capra tore it up through there. That looks good. But these are like my magic set of wheels and tires. I love these tires. So as far as traction goes, I'm gonna give it to the capper all day. This obstacle's always been tricky for me. It's funny because I've, I've made it with my first RC crawler, which is my 1.9 Wraith. And then there's been other trucks that I built that couldn't hang with this one. So like, I guess I don't know if I just never figured out the line or what. But it's this weird side hill with this ledge that you gotta get up and over. This thing really feels like it's lacking punch right now. Like, this thing should have more power than this. So there we're all torque twisted up. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna climb up that at this point. Okay, let's, let's climb earlier and see if this makes any difference. Getting more sideways and a little more side hilled on it. Okay, that looks good. Now it doesn't. Yeah, this optic does not like this wall. <laughs> nice little wheelie there. 
So yeah, that's a negative there. I don't know if I mentioned this, that these cars have very similar electronic setups. This one's got a Fusion Pro in it as well, but uh, it's got a Reefs 888 instead of a 777, and this one is not brass. So yeah, the capper not finding that line either. I wonder if a narrow truck is the benefit part. Or, yeah, it just keeps giving you those little glimpses of like, oh, maybe, and then it doesn't. Okay, I'm trying to get that rear up a little higher before we start. That's picking up that front right. Hey, there it is. Nice work, Capra. So again, could be tires, but could be the overall setup of the car as well. I mean, this thing's got long shocks. It's leaning way over. This is the downside to having a very art, a car that articulates a lot, is that on side hills and stuff, you need a lot more body roll. Now I've got a suck down winch to control that when I want. But uh, for this comparison, I'm not using it. It's my West Desert Wheeler micro winch mount for Capras. Another interesting fact on these two cars is that they are very, very similar in weight. Um, this car is, oh man, which one was heavier? They're within four ounces of each other. One of them was six pounds, 14. And then the other one was like seven pounds, three ounces. But I, I don't currently remember which one was which. I'll, I'll put it on the screen right here. But I found that very interesting that these two plastic cage buggies with brass added to each ended up being very similar in overall weight. It's gonna slide down to its belly and then we're gonna see what happens if it stays controlled or not. There's a good chance it's just gonna fall off and roll. Yep, good chance. This might be something that the old optic doesn't want to do. But now we're going to get bellied this time. Okay, she finally settled in, but I had to go way driver. Nice. I do love the long wheelbase on these cars. It helps it reach certain obstacles like this. If that front right would pull up out of there. Now we're getting on a weird angle and it doesn't want to do that. Maybe it'll go left. Now we're axled out and diffed out, but it pulled itself right through that. That wasn't too bad. Overall, that's a hard line. I did it. We're going to come up here. This is always a cool one. Yeah, nice. And then we got to get our butt scooted over. I still feel like this motor is majorly lacking punch right now, and I don't know why. It feels down on power, but it's a, they're running the exact same batteries, 1400 Gen 3S packs. So same motor, same batteries. Ooh, that's, uh, that's gonna hurt. So yeah, we're bellying out as hard as possible right there. See how much momentum it takes. That much. And there it is. Let's go grab our capper and see how it runs that line. Okay, so we're going to see if we can take a more aggressive line, which would just be getting that driver tire closer to this point that we're tipping up and over right here. So we drove down that point with that front driver tire. And we're trying to get it to not roll right there. 
car handled it like a boss. That was awesome. And it, this isn't overall that shocking to me. I do think I did expect the Capra to be just a bit better performer. The H10 is very cool and it's a great hybrid of like, hey, do you want to make a rock racer or do you want to make a rock crawler? Which is really cool. The, you know, the builder gets to decide where they want to go with it. In RTR, it's, it rides a fine line right down the middle. But the, the Capra here, what's funny is stock, they are very fast because they put bad gear ratios in them and it was not geared down enough. But once you gear them down, like I have here, okay, so I'm not on my rear axle like the H10 was. I'm on my uh, boat side there. So there it goes. Same thing, just dragged some plastic and pulled itself up and out. But the Capra is definitely, in my eyes, just more of a dedicated rock crawler. Now, they're not the best rock crawler, right? They, they won't keep up with the flat rail builds and stuff. You got a big, heavy plastic cage to, rock, to pull around. But this cage is smaller and lighter, I would assume, than the H10. So the H10 looks great. I like its design, but they're, they're just different cars, and that's fine. I want different cars. If they were the same, that'd be pretty boring. Now, I don't know that adding portals to an H10 would automatically make it better. Let's see how the belly clearance is on this guy. Considerably better. I never would have been able to crawl that with the H10. So, there you go. The Capra's just got better belly clearance for sure. Alright, another breakover challenge here. Now keep in mind, this thing's belly clearance is better than the factory truck because I've got taller tires on it and longer shocks. So when I hit the skid plate, uh, the shocks are gonna droop out more than factory. And then the taller tires just lift the entire truck up off the ground. But they're not crazy tall, they're 5.3, which is the benefit of the cut and shut. They're just not huge, but they are noticeably taller compared to a 4.75. Man, that was close. It just torque twists when that right rear gets down in there. If that front left would stay planted, it, it could probably do this. But every time that right rear touches, it pulls it up off the wall. It almost wanted to climb there. You're gonna have to go up on that little branch at the bottom. But now our front end is not where it needs to be. The hook is off to the right here. So yeah, just not quite crawling this. A little bit of momentum, and that's all it took. It, that momentum didn't allow the car to torque twist on its way up. It kept the front end planted and the tires got the traction they needed. How about same thing here, a little momentum. Oh, come on. Nice. Good work, Optic. That was cool. All right. Hopefully you guys are subscribers and you recognize this obstacle. This is a really fun one. It's always a challenge. And of course, we got to put the buggies on it. This originally was just a flat out buggy line. Ooh, we uh, smashed our front axle into the rock. Not exactly the line there. So let's turn into it turned a little earlier this time and then that front driver's got to come up so I usually straighten up just a little bit and then turn back into it and that right rear is exactly where it needs to be oh no the uh, center of gravity just let go on that one if I'm honest that right rear was probably just a little too far under the truck Missed our, missed our turn in just by a couple millimeters. Yeah, it's taking a little too big of a bite out of that. So reverse there. Now our right rear is in a better spot, but it's still torque twisting on us, which isn't surprising on this angle. It's steep and off camber. And it's, it's gonna let go. 
So I guess we'll just take a way more mellow approach to this. Still trying to flip on us. So that's the disadvantage of having less gearing in the axles themselves, is you just get more torque twist out of this uh, axle set, right? Also, by the way, I've still got the, uh, the factory ring and pinions in here. I have not swapped them for machined. This car does not want to do this right now. So now I feel uh, personally challenged to make it do it. And I'm trying to drive it really pretty without taking a bunch of backups and stuff and little resets. That front left just carries. Oh, that was it. In fact, that was it. Okay. That is not how I normally run that line. Okay, it will do it. Well, friends, my GoPro overheated, so now it's to the iPhone and uh, worse audio. Luckily, it's not windy at all today, so audio should be pretty decent. Let's see if we can just hang that tire on the old Capra up there. It sure did. Picked up a little bit, but in our favor. And then you just run this line right on up. See, that's how this line is done. You hang the tire, you pull the rears up. Simple as that, but the uh, the H10 didn't like it that way. I had to use just just a tiniest touch of like, not even momentum, just a consistent throttle to keep the tires more planted and not give the suspension time to unload. Maybe my truck is undersprung, but uh, just overall, H10 didn't want to crawl it like this capper will. And that's all right. Like I say, they're they're different trucks, and that's fine. I still like the H10, it's a cool truck. And it's definitely gonna be stout with all the Vanquish products in it. I have no fears of breaking an H10 axle. And uh, the capper axles, I know that I can break these things. Well, friends, that's going to be the end of it for this video, my GoPro overheated. It's really annoying, it's only getting hotter, so I'm just gonna be battling that from here on. But, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the content. Definitely let me know down below which one you like, if you prefer your H10 to your Capra or the other way around. I'm happy I can own both. They're both very cool buggies and I'm glad that both are here. Uh, the new Vanquish truck, I really like it. Uh, I'm excited to see the more aftermarket kind of come out for this thing. Uh, you've seen the teases for the aluminum axles for it. I definitely want to get like actual brass knuckles for it as well. So uh, they're both fantastic trucks. I really like them both. The VFD is just such a known good product. The Capro is a swing and the miss on their transmission, but there's aftermarket to support it and make uh you know you can make it into whatever you want at this point so thank you guys so much for watching my name is logan with west desert wheeler i will have affiliate links down below for both these trucks if you guys are interested in picking one up be sure to go down below use my link it will kick a few bucks my way i would greatly appreciate it i am full-time here on youtube and running my business west desert wheeler we will see you guys in the next one keep the rubber side down almost forgot to run this line with the uh with the old capra so let's see how she does a little overdrive to help pull that front end up and out. Can it hold this front left on the rock? It's got the hook. Beautiful. Crawled it. Absolutely crawled it. That was sick. I took a much further right line here. The optic, I went up the overhang ledge. Let's try the overhang ledge. Yeah, instead of going out to the right, this is the line that the optic took. Again, crawled it. Fantastic. This thing is just edging out that H10, and uh, it's just a portal buggy, man. That's what they do.